Chuck Fletcher took a bullet today. He uh, was fired as the GM. And I see Pierre Lebrun uh, reporting in The Athletic. We were just talking about his piece about other GMs that, you know, now may be or feeling themselves on the hot seat. And the names are Kyle Dubas, Brad Treleving, Pierre Dorian, which surprised me a little bit, and Ron Hextall in Pittsburgh. Kevin Sheveldayoff's not on that list. Um, how, how significant changes do you think happen to this team if the Jets don't make the playoffs? And could that possibly include the GM, in your opinion? Or is that more would be down the road if things continue to go potentially through this offseason? I mean, is he going to be the steward for this guy in the offseason no matter what? It's a good question, Hassan. Only Mark Chipman really knows that answer for sure. But the biggest difference between Dubas, Treleving, and Kevin Sheveldayoff is that one member of that trio was <laughs> was given an extension, an ex- an expansive expen. Uh, we believe it was a three year extension. Uh, so those other two guys are on expiring contracts. So I do think that that is a big difference. That's not to say that uh, it's a guarantee and for Pierre job. Mentions sec- that. Pierre mentions that in the thing. Right. It's not a guarantee for job security, but I mean it. It is. It is a factor uh, to some degree for sure. Uh, in terms of Cheval Dayoff, Huss, it's. It, it's tough to know for sure. You know, the Jets, if they happen to collapse and miss the playoffs, does you know is the autopsy going to include an evaluation of the general manager? Of course it is. It has to. Uh, that was part of the equation last year as well. But uh, the Jets chose to stand with Shevel Day off then, and I would imagine that you know, in all likelihood they would stand to stick with them now. I mean, we've debated about the deadline, and you know, we both agree we thought the Jets probably could have made a move on the back end to bolster the forward additions as well. I mean, he did go out and help their forward group, but did he help their team enough? I mean, that's still up for debate and will be determined over the last quarter of the year. But, you know, at some point, I mean, the Jets are going to decide if, if what direction, A, what direction they're going to go, and B, if Kevin Sheveldayoff is the person to implement that direction, Huss. And, and all that we have in terms of evidence so far through 12 years is that Kevin Sheveldayoff has the full support of Mark Chipman and the ownership group. So until that changes, it, it, it seems as though that's the direction that they're going. So it's an interesting time. I think it's a tense time. I would imagine that it has, you know, it's a tense time for Kevin Sheveldayoff because through 30 games, he was probably feeling pretty good about things. And now through 67 games, now things are getting to be a nervous time. Uh, you know, I'm sure some folks have watched. I mean, today was a was a good chance to talk with Blake Wheeler. He is the most seasoned player on this team, even though he's not the captain. Uh, his words still hold a lot of value. And, uh, you know, Blake said, great teams are forged through fire. So we know that the Jets have not handled adversity down the stretch all that well. And, uh, and there are numerous examples, whether it's 2019 or 2021. So they have a chance to define what the season is going to end up like and what it's going to look like. And, you know, today having Blake speak, I mean, we know Blake doesn't love to do media now that he's not the captain and, and that's well within his right. But I thought he had some interesting things to say and I think it was important for him to speak. Now, ultimately it's about action, but I think what he said made a lot of sense. I mean, he went back to saying that, you know, there have been more positive signs in the last couple of games. And we know that even though he's an intense person and, can be a little bit direct and short with media at times. I mean, Blake still generally views his team through an optimistic lens, and he did that again today. And I think it was an important time. We, we've talked about leadership a lot this year, Huss. Uh, and I think Blake's voice still matters when it comes to leadership, and, and he said all the right things today. Now, it's up to the Jets to back those words up with actions, but they, to me, at least look like they're in the right state to get ready for this weekend's games. And sorry, I didn't mean to, to veer... I just don't have a good answer for you, Huss. And like I said, only Mark Chipman knows that answer. And I know that some folks will be, you know, calling for changes if the Jets miss the playoffs, and especially given what's on the horizon. I mean, will they? I still, I don't think they're going to commit to a full rebuild, and I don't see that happening. So if they're going to change it up on the fly, I just don't see the scenario being a parallel with the Flyers, Huss. I mean, they're one of the worst teams in the NHL this year. So I, I know that there are some parallels between Chuck Fletcher and Kevin Sheveldayoff. And now Chuck Fletcher has been fired twice during Sheveldayoff's tenure. 
I just don't know that I would equate them as as you know, I, there are some well, similarities. I don't see them as direct parallels. Here's the thing, and I'm not lobbying on either side of it. I'm just kind of speaking to you know what's at stake. I think sure. for the entire thing, because let's face it, if the Winnipeg Jets blow this and miss the playoffs, we'll be able to look back and just by the numbers for the last half of the season. Game if that 31, happens, man. started game 31. They, they'll they'll be one of the worst teams in the National Hockey League. I mean, even right now. When you look at the records from January 1st to where we are right now, it's ugly. Uh, and Sub it's a 500. Damn, it's a damn 31. good thing that they got the points and did what they did earlier on so that they still can salvage this right now. Um, but I do wonder, I mean, what sort of a, uh, what sort of an autopsy it happens if we do get to that point? Because I think regardless of what happens, we're going to see some major changes when it comes to some of the personnel. And... Um, and as I said, I mean, retool, reload, however you want to define those things, I think big changes are coming. And a part of that is going to be outside of their hands. Depends on, you know, players' willingness to stick around and sign extensions. Yep. And I'm telling you, I don't think that job gets any easier if this season ends the way that it has been trending right now, which brings us all back to, sorry, go ahead. Just one quick one. I mean, Hus, I mean, how big a factor is Barry Trotz taking over Nashville? I mean, this was a person that the Jets were looking at bringing into the organization and the thought was that Barry eventually wanted to slide into the GM role. So a potential successor is already off the board had the Jets ever gotten to that point. And again, I'm not saying that they were at that point, but they certainly had him involved in the coaching discussion. And if he was going to be accepting, we knew that that other you know, piece of the puzzle or domino was potentially going to fall eventually, whether that meant Kevin Sheveldayoff moving into more of a president role or hockey ops uh, rather than being strictly the general manager, you know, remains to be seen. And uh, that's, sorry, where I will say, Hus, there is a parallel, is that the Flyers are hiring or are said to be hiring both a president and, you know, of, of hockey ops plus a general manager. So, I mean, at some point, if we're looking at the discussion for the Jets, Maybe that's something they consider adding, you know, if you're not going to replace the general manager, what if you add a voice into that, you know, into the hierarchy, uh, you know, and even if, it, even if it means more on the business side, the way that Brian Burke handles things in, in Pittsburgh, because I know you mentioned Ron Hextall. So uh, that would be something for me to keep an eye or for people to keep an eye on. It's been something that I've been curious about for, you know, a number of years, but, you know, we know that whether that's related to, you know, revenues or whatever else I, I don't know but I'd be curious if that would be something the Jets would consider at some point like we saw in Vancouver how big the expansion was with a bunch of AGMs being brought in I wonder if if the Jets at some point consider having a president added to the mix or maybe another assistant general manager to go with Craig Heisinger and Larry Simmons would be the other would be the other part of that equation well, well I mean listen I mean if you accept I mean that there's a crisis with the team right now on the ice I mean I don't think it's going too far to say that they're bordering on crisis on the business side as well right now I mean empty seats challenges selling sponsorships all of those things are part of where they are at right now and I think there's certainly an argument to be made that another voice another person in there that could help on both sides would be beneficial to the team those people also are very expensive. <laughs> and uh, that's fair. You know what? If you're in a situation where your bottom line is going backwards, I'm, and again, it's not my money. I'm not making the decisions. I have no idea how bad it is. I just know the way it looks and I know how different it has been from being that arena this season as to other seasons. And I think that creates a whole nother level of issues and at the same time it may force their hand a little bit on doing things that they hadn't done it's interesting that you bring up the nashville predators ken because nashville always seemed to be that model franchise that the winnipeg jets and true north sort of thought that they would be patterning themselves afterwards david Poyle, gm for what 26 years or something like that till he basically step down and now Barry Trotz is taking over. And certainly I think as we've seen how long Paul Maurice was the guy here for, they had thought that, you know, a lot like the Pittsburgh Steelers, get a guy, believe in that guy. And that is your guy going forward. And yeah. you know, you're not making these quick decisions. It's very rare in pro sports, especially in the NHL to go that road. But I do think that that was the vision of the people at the head of true North when they were putting this team together. And that's great if you're winning and you maintain being competitive. It certainly does test those plans when you have seasons like they've had in the past. And honestly, I mean, again, and I don't want to get too much into what ifs, but 
there are a lot of what ifs on this team. And to be honest, I think Ken bringing us back to this weekend and your proclamation of a season defining road trip, I think you're exactly right. I mean, I think the time is now for the guys that are wearing those jerseys to step up and a few wins can change a lot very quickly. But man, they've been tough to come by right now, and it's not going to happen if they don't get better performances from a number of players, but especially the guys that, frankly, are getting the biggest checks. 